Welcome to Championship Preview from the Midlands Park Hotel. Today we're going to take a look at the Leash Shopping Centre Senior Hurling Championships for 2018. Joined here today in studio, I'm joined by Tommy Buggy of Property Partners Buggy. Uh, very welcome to the show today, Tommy. Uh, Tommy previously had experience with Boris Lugan in 2013, leading him to a county final, and last year with Clock Balacala, also leading him to a final, but ultimately losing out. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Tommy. You're welcome. Nice to be here. So, uh, Tommy, we're going to take a quick look at the Leach Senior Hurling Championships. Yeah. Um, so, I suppose we're just going to jump right in. Let's take a look at the groups. So, obviously, this year we have a new structure to the championship. Yeah, this, this, um, it looks like a very good structure, actually, with, with two groups. Um, and it's just ironic that the two clubs that lobbied for this right down the air and clock by the call actually opened the championship next Thursday night. So, um, both these clubs have been looking for this sort of structure in place for the last couple of years. And um, they're the ones to start it off, and it, that promises to be an absolute cracker. Actually, that that's going to be a good opening. Yeah. So uh, I suppose we'll just take a look at Group A Group first. A, Group A has the 2016 champions Boris Cotton in there, and last year's Senior A champions Ballin Ballin Gales, along with Ballin Kill, and probably the surprise pack of the last year's championship, I believe, Saint Nazarians like made it to county semi final, were the only team to beat the county champions last year. You know, beat Camros. Um, in, a, in a cracking game to beat them by a point in, in a more park. So if you were to weigh it up and, and look at it on paper, that's probably the weaker of the two groups, but then Hurling was never played on paper, it was played on grass. Never was. Know, so, um, group B then... Much trickier group. Yeah, it's been much trickier. It's well, group of death. It has been grass. tricking the group, christened the group of death, but like you have last year's champions, last year's runners-up, right down the air, who are there or thereabouts every year, and Castletown, who in latter years aren't the giants of the game that the ones were, like the, if you go back a few years, go back 10, 12 years, Castletown were an absolutely cracking club hurling team. Um, players like the Fanons and, and those back in those days, they were a brilliant team. Unlucky maybe even to win a Leicester title back that mm -hmm. time. So, like the only two games in that are right down in Balacala and then Camros and Castletown, the local derby. So, like, that group, uh, I wouldn't like to try and predict it even. No, I, I don't. I'll probably be it. asked that before the game. <laughs> <ever, but laughs> we'll get to I don't that. like the idea of predicting it. No, no. So, uh, Tommy, let's just take a look at the fixtures. So, for Group A, um, obviously we're opening up with uh, Abbey Leaks and Balnakill. Yeah. Now, um, like I said earlier, Abbey Leaks last year really, really had a brilliant year. And they're, they're, they're sort of a team that there's very few individuals start on. The, the, the team is. The sum of its parts is greater than the individuals, like in, in their case, and they have a massive work ethic, really well drilled, well coached team. Um, Donald Franks is there again this year with them, has done an excellent job, you know, um, him and Sass and, and the rest of the team there. They have Owen Riley back since the league. Yeah, he was away in, in Dubai, he's teaching in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. He's back. Um, they have the likes of Ender Rowland, like, in the role is so valuable to a team, you know, he not alone is he a good shot stopper, a good keeper, great communicator, all that, but he actually can set up attacks. His yeah. puck outs are that good. You and know. he can score a freeze yeah, as well from long range. He pitches in with yeah, nine points every year. I think he was actually crying the leash uh, long puck championship there. No no great shock, so it's not looking at him. Um, and he pitches in with a few points every game, or every year. The thing about them is, the they have a, like I said, they have a huge work ethic. They work shopping hard for each other. They will struggle a little bit in their full back line if they're not careful. If they don't keep it nice and compact at the back. They're, they're missing some from their full back line last year. Um, who's gone? I'm not sure. Mark Cahill Mark is yeah. away for the but summer. But Ryan Peacock's gone as well. Ryan He's Peacock's a huge away. loss to them. Mark Cahill is in Boston, that's right. Mm. And um, So they need to keep it nice and compact at the back and you know, create as much space for their inside forwards as they can. They're up against Ballon the Kill, mm -hmm. neighbours again, um, long traditional history rivalry there. Ballon the Kill or Ballon the Kill, right? No one's going to expect anything huge from them, but still, they are an extremely hard team to beat. They're hard to beat, and they make themselves hard to beat. Mm -hmm. And you, you, like, you have people like Seamus Dwyer, a massive servant to the club. I watched Seamus last year in three or four games, and um, like he still plays a massive role for them. He has a sort of a free role there operating in the middle third of the field. Really, really good at it. Chad's still a fine young hurler. Um, the guy who really impressed me for Bandicoot last year was Sean Downey. 
who was with the seniors. Massive work I think operates between the two 21s nearly even though he's playing at 12. Really, really sort of the heartbeat of that team at, at times, you know. Um, and they have a very good goalkeeper in Young Sims. So, look, to call that one, um, if you're looking at league form and this, that and other, Abbey Leagues didn't have a great league, but with Riley back, you'd have to give him the nod, I think. Okay. You'd have to give him the nod. And, of course, with Abbey Leagues, uh, they've got some good forwards. Owen Fenley there, of course. Cracking young horror. Mm -hmm. Cracking young horror. Um, good chap to carry ball. Good chap to take on his man, you know. Doesn't do it all the time, mm -hmm. but... When he's on song, he's really, really impressive. And who will they look to now for as their main scoring threat? Um, Owen Riley will be their main scoring threat. I presume he'll start, even though he's only back a couple of weeks. Um, brilliant free taker, mm -hmm. you know, pitches in with a couple of scores from play. Got brilliant goal last year. I think it was against Camaros. He got mm -hmm. a great goal, you know. So him and Fenley would be their main, you know, with Peacock gone. And Dane, um, yeah. Dane Peacock is there. Of he's course. still there, but what's his name? Ryan is gone. Yeah, you know. So Dane Peacock. Um, Will will pitch in it, but they're like I said, with Abbey Leagues, their strength is in their their unity and okay. their teamwork and their work ethic. Whereas maybe and with Ballon and Kill, they're extremely well organised. Abbey Leagues are. Whereas with Ballon Kill, they're a team that have quite few uh, intercounty players, of course. Yeah, they've got uh, Podge Lawler, yeah, James Walsh, James Walsh, yeah, the former Sean Downey, Cha, mm -hmm. you know. But the problem for Ballon Kill at the moment is to get maybe three or four young guys to come up and step up to senior level mm -hmm. and I don't see that at the moment. Okay. I don't see them. I think they'll stick with the old guard maybe this year again. Yeah, but Jackman again in the middle of the field for him, he'd probably tap over seven or eight points every day from threes. <laughs> you know, so still fine hurlers but I slightly lean towards Abbey Leagues on that one. Tipping with Abbey Leagues. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then moving on to Ballyfin Gales against Boris Kilcotton. Boris uh, Kilcotton obviously Boris a team Kilcotton, that you know yeah, quite well. well. I would have known them quite well. There's, there's probably there's a huge personnel change there since I was there, but I would know an awful lot of the, the guys that are into their mid-twenties now and that, the likes of Stevie Fine and Owen Fleming and mm -hmm. those chaps. Um, but they're still the nucleus of their team is, is Matthew, Whelan, or, um, Neil Foyle, you know, those guys. Mm -hmm. the, PJ Scully obviously has PJ, big but Yeah, PJ, in fairness to PJ, he's a brilliant young hurler, has been since he was, I was watching him since he was 15 or 16. Cracking horror, crippled with injuries, mm -hmm. really bad injuries. And, but he seems to be on the mend, seems to be back to himself. Yeah. Um, they go back two years ago in the county final, like no matter where they put the ball down for a free, he put it over the yeah. bar. You know, he was a shoot outstanding. Off yeah. yeah, he was outstanding that day for them. And if you if you go to their team, they're very solid, really, really solid. And I'd say they were kicking themselves. They're really disappointed after their show on last year in the semi final. You know, they just didn't play up to their potential on the day, so they didn't. And um, I know I was on the receiving end of it last year with Balakala, what they can do when they're mm -hmm. on song. And you have good young forwards like the two Dunphys there, yeah. Neil Fine, like I said earlier. Um, and they have a really good manager, a guy called Terence Fahey is managing him this year. Sure. Terence was doing the coaching that last year. And I know Terence going back a long time. He actually taught in Castle Corner for years and was very well got among the young orders in, in the school that time and Claremont actually and nice. he's really really top class manager so he is and how, how do you think uh, Ballyfennel fair? hard to know um, last year I saw him twice I only saw him twice last year because you'd be involved in games you might get to see him all but I, they were so well organised big physical team extremely fit and Fintan Deegan had them yeah. Him. And they appear to be buying into everything he was doing. And with Garrett Dunphy in the forwards, in Alliance, mm -hmm. to have good hurlers. Now, on the flip side of that, um, they had brought in a guy this year from Kilkenny to Magic called Mark Terr, and things just didn't work out. I don't know what Brother happened. of Jackie, of course. Yeah, brother of Jackie. I know Mark well, I know Mark for years. And they brought in Mark, and Mark left by mutual consent actually a while ago. Um, Seemingly the response wasn't there. And they're, they're the only dual club in Leash, as far as I know, that yeah, have that senior, senior level. I know the Balfin Gales, and they've had the Mount Millie mm -hmm. and all back now this year as well. But um, they're the only dual club. You know, it's a great achievement. And it's for a huge achievement for a small area mm -hmm. with a small population. But it's extremely hard to manage that and, you know, pay homage to two gods. Yeah. You know, it's a hard thing to do yeah. at that level, you know. So, um, 
I can't see Boris Lukaku being beaten with that one. No. I suppose Balfin's league wasn't the greatest now. I know they'll have the addition of the guys back and stuff with yeah. Gales. They will. And, and like I'm saying this a long time, league form has no bearing really. Um, championship is championship. And even though it's a different structure this year in Leash and it's a round robin, every team will want to hit the ground running. Every team will want to get their two points on the board as early as they can. So like even though Boris Cotton would be odds on favourites I'd imagine to win this game, Balafin Gales will target their first game. They, they should target the first game anyway and have a right cut off them, you know, but I, I can't see Boris losing that one. Okay. So we'll move on to the next fixture then. And again Boris Kilgotten will meet Abbey Leafs. So we've obviously talked about Boris Kilgotten, we've talked about Abbey Leafs. Yeah. How do you see that one going? Well you see, it's very hard to preview the second round. It really depends it's on how first it's going to round go. Two. But in that group, which like we said earlier might appear a little bit weaker, I'd imagine Boris Kilcotton to come out on top of that group actually. Mm -hmm. So I would. Um, but if Abbey Leafs get their two points early on, if they do like get over Banley Kill, if they did get over Banley Kill, then they're targeting top place in the group. Mm -hmm. So Changes but, the story completely. You know, Boris Kilcotton seen that would seem to have a bit more firepower than anyone else in that group. Yeah. They really would, you know. Um and then I suppose Bally, Bally Finn will come up against Ballon and Kill then as well. And that'll be, that'll be a big game. An awful thing to say, but and, uh, that could end up being a decider to say who, who stays out really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, With, of course, the two te top two teams yeah. from the group going Both forward, two, yeah. the last one falling into the relegation yeah. playoff. That, if you were the Ballon and Kill manager or Ballon Finn manager, you would definitely target that one for your two points. Right. They're, and both managers, I presume, will target that mm -hmm. one. Um, Ballon kill for me, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so I suppose to look at the group as, as, a, as an overall, Tommy, um, who do you think, who do you predict maybe finishing those two top spots? I, I think Boris Kilcotton, Abbey Leakes, Ballon the Kill, Ballon Finn, in that order. Okay. I think, um, mm -hmm. I've been wrong before. You've been wrong before. <laughs> on numerous <laughs> occasions. Um, but no, that's the draft, I would imagine that's the way I could finish. Okay. Yeah. So Tommy, moving on to Group B. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look at that now. Obviously, uh, it's been labelled the, the Group of Death yeah. for a reason. Uh, four big teams in it. Four cracking teams in it, yeah. How do you see this one going? Oh. Um, well, we'll start with Rat Downey, Erin and Barlacala, right? That's yeah. Clock Barlacala. First game. Um, like I said earlier in the, the chat, both teams, both clubs looking for this format. Um, ironically, they meet in it next Thursday night. Uh, how do I see it going? I think if Clock Balakala can maintain the momentum, mm. Rat Downey are a little bit of an unknown quantity this year. Okay. They didn't perform as well last year as in previous years, um, but they're a massive team with a massive heart, with a huge sort of spirit about them. Okay. And will t they take beating every day they go out. Mm. But if Balakala hit form, now, Balakala, Clock Balakala are in a position here where Tom Delaney is gone for the year, yeah. um, Darren Maher is gone for a while, Okay. and two huge losses. Darren Maher is a massive Huge loss, full massive back. loss of fullback. Um, and how to replace that now? They, they still have some really good experienced and young orders. There's a guy in there called Ronan Broderick who I would yeah. have. I think he was away for the summer maybe last, last year. year. Yeah, he yeah. was back for championship and that absolutely brilliantly talented hurler and has the physique for it and the whole lot really good chap um, you, you, see could him see, you, could see, you could see Ronan going in at full back yeah mm -hmm. um, John Delaney is still there John A is still there Canis is still there mm -hmm. Willie Highland is still there you know huge so Willie obviously they're, they're, is probably going to be their main scorer ah, he, well he mightn't have to be this year with Picky back mm -hmm. you know and Picky coming back to him will we'll give them an, an added boost and will provide a huge scoring threat, you know, and, and he was unfortunate to picky last year, he picked up a really serious injury and missed most of the year with it. So, their, their main score, but they have another guy up front called Robbie Phelan, who I would have, would yeah. rate very highly, a brilliant young hurler, quite unassuming young fella, but a really good hurler. When he talks out, he changes, you know, he, he morphs into a, a really strong, physical, good work rate, all that. Um, I think Clock Balakala might share that. Now, the thing for Rat Downey, Aaron this year is Joe is back, Joe Fitzpatrick is back. Um, 
Ross King is away though for the first couple of rounds. He's away. Yeah, I, th- I believe he's away in America. Loss, yeah. Massive loss to them. Mm-hmm. Huge loss to them. But Paddy McCain, James Ryan, Paddy Porson, you know, all those guys will provide a score and threat for them. A lot of them have kind of come yeah. to the fore this yeah. year. Mark yeah. Kavanagh is another one who will take a serious watching, mm-hmm. you know. Seems um, to have hit his form again after his yeah, crucial injury last yeah, year. Yeah, another chap that suffered badly with a crucial injury, and, and, but a serious score potential there as well. So I'd imagine that this game will turn into a, a shootout. Yeah. Um, now both teams have good bats, and you know, but I think it'll turn into a shootout, and the scoring power for me would lie slightly with Clock Balakala, just slightly. Um, I suppose if, obviously if, there's more than, gone. if there's more than three points in this, I'd be shocked. I, I don't so, think there will be. No, if there's any more than that, I'd be shocked either way. But just slightly leaning towards Clock Balakala. Okay. Looking forward to Cameras and Pastime Gales. Um, Cameras, obviously, the reigning. Yeah. Uh, oh, seen around after after putting in an absolutely brilliant last five years, you mm-hmm. know, and have been challenging for honours and winning honours. Won the double in 2017. Yeah. They're looking to a double this league year. Already played this year. Won the minor A last year. Um, cracking minor A final last year with Castletown Gales, as it turns mm-hmm. out. And you'd expect this year to see some of those young fellas coming through on both sides. Um, the likes of Oshin Bennett. Young Gohan made an appearance yeah. in the in the final yeah. one as a sub. Um, Joe Phelan from Camros. You know, you'd imagine those young guys will play senior championship this year. Um, the thing for Camros is after the fallout from the Kilcarno Kalahi game last year in Leinster, they're gonna be without uh, Dooley and Mossy Mossy Bork. Bork, you know, so they're like Darren Dooley's a cracking wing back and Mossy, Mossy, Mossy Bork that is, forward, Mossy like. Bork is so important to Camros. You know, he drifts off the middle picks up a lot of ball, an awful lot of what goes well for cameras goes through Mossy Bork, mm-hmm. you know, and then they have Zane, and Zane is a cracking hurler still, you know, main score getter, but the guy that really impresses me in the camera setup is Niall Holmes. Okay, really impresses he lines me. out there in the wing forward line. Yeah, but doesn't, doesn't conform to all the norms of a, of a wing forward, pops up, scores goals, pops up, scores points, creates goals, causes havoc in defences. You know, so he's a guy that really has impressed me over a couple of years watching cameras. So, um, Castletown Gales, John Lyons, their old man is back in charge. Um, John was a great servant to the club out there and, and to the county, a brilliant goalkeeper in his day, and a nice guy with it. And um, cameras have a new manager with Danny Owen. So, with the Slee Bloom guys, and I know, I know I'm going as Castletown Gales, um, they won't be far off. And, but logically, you would have to give the, the nod to cameras on this one. Okay. But it's a neighbour, it's, it's, a, it's a rivalry that's going back now, and at times it, it was a bit unseemly, but there's a, there's a rivalry there, and there's a want there in both clubs to turn the other one over, and this could really be a cracking game. I think this could be the game of the round. Better than the, the opening round well, picture of that all the time. That'll be more open, and you know, and you'll have a shootout, like I said. But this would be really intense. This, this will be so Chris. intense. Yeah. yeah. And the team that wants this one most will come out on top. Cameras are probably a better hurling team. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't On always, the day. Yeah, yeah. That can happen. I think this could be the game of the round, yeah. 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 Well I suppose looking at Castlein, they obviously haven't had a great year to date, their league. Um, like I said earlier, the league you can forget about the league now mm-hmm. it's over. And they didn't have the Sleeve Bloom contingent during the league. You know, and another string to their board coming into chapter is Gerald Redden is home. Oh, he's back. Yeah, and he will be a big addition. To okay. Him. Yeah, big, strong, big man. Oh, um, I know Gerald going back the years and, and um, played dual. He was dual. Mount Melik. Yeah, he plays football with Mount Melik, and but gives a hundred percent every day he goes out, mm-hmm. and will be a big addition to him around the middle of the field or wherever they decide to play. Him. And who will who will cast him looks on the day? Jerry will be one, I'd okay. imagine. Um, you, you, th- you reckon he's just going to slot back into that team? Yeah, I think, yeah, Ryan Mulaney has to have a big year for them yeah. this year. He's had a great year with Leash. Yeah, he has, and like that, he's maturing into a fine hurler. He has to have a big year for them. Um, I think Ben Conroy from the Sleeve Lone contingent, like, if you can get enough ball to Ben Conroy, yeah, yeah. he will score. So they're the men that they look to, to get scored from. Um, John Gotham is still hurling there, hurling as well as ever wing back last year. You know, so overall, I think they'll be closer to Cameras than a lot of people give to imagine they would be. And I suppose with Cameras, obviously, they, they claimed their 25th Bob O'Keefe Cup last year. 
they're, they're they're absolutely an amazing gear. club. They're an amazing club. Um, and hats off to them. And you have to give them credit. Like they won a minor A last year. They won a league, senior league, and a senior championship. Right. They, I think they won loads of other stuff as well. But mm-hmm. anyway, and they just keep going and going and producing good young hurlers all the time. And if if they have that hunger that champions sometimes don't have, you know, sometimes they're sated after winning it. And they've been at the top table now for five years in a row. Mm-hmm. So they have, um, if they have that hunger that they had, that they showed last year and back to the last few years, um, they'll take a fair bit of beating this year, yeah. And then I suppose moving on to the next round, we'll see Rat Downing and Camrys replay um, of, of um, 2016. 2016, yeah. of course. Yeah, and Rat Downing came out on top on that one. What happened in 2016 probably counts for nothing now. Um, like I said, I predict Clock Balacala to overturn Rat down the air in the first round. And if that happens, they're fighting for their lives at mm-hmm. that stage. And a wounded Rat down the air team might take a bit of stopping. Mm-hmm. You know, you see, it's very hard to preview round two until you see how round one yeah. goes, but, of course. Um, and we never thought Ryan right. King could be home yeah. in time and for the second game. From what I know, I don't think he'd be home at that stage. Okay. I, I, I could be wrong mm-hmm. there. But, um, but Obviously losing, like missing the Lee Sheener yeah. captain oh, for, your, for, for his own club. Yeah, for Matt Nets, he's a cracking hurler, yeah. you know, and he's a score getter and he's a man they look to. You know, and who, so. who do you think will fill that void for him? Paddy oh, Mark Kavanagh will yeah. fill that void for the simple reason being he missed most of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, similar style of hurler. Almost, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think he'll fill that void. Paddy Purcell will have to have a huge year for them. He's a real engine and mm-hmm. you know, gets up and down the field. Had a great year with Leash also. Ah, good lad, a really good You know, it might have been the most yeah. bright year for Leash Ireland, but Paddy really stood really out. Really cracking hurler, mm-hmm. you know. And um, like causes would torment you trying to mark him, I'd imagine, you know, because he's all over the place. So there the guy, but Mark Havana would fill the score by you, I'd okay. imagine. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And another guy there that we don't mention too often, Paddy McCain. Yeah, we'll chip in with a few for them. Small guy, yeah. on that oh, team this year. Very lively, um, takes mind in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I suppose of course Mark Dowell had a had a good year for them as well. He scored yeah. a goal in the county final last year. Scored a goal well, for cameras. For yeah. cameras, yeah. Yeah. scored a goal in the. Uh, oh, very, very, very good hurler. Um, but I think that their their strength up there in cameras as well, and it is in their unity. And mm-hmm. They will. They're a close knit group. They're a close knit group. They'll all sing off the one hymn sheet. And they will fight to the bitter end. I suppose, kind of ironically, Danny Owens, the Cormac man, yeah. coming in over them this year, taking over from Marion yeah. Delaney. Yeah. Um, how do you think his influence was it? How about Danny has a good track record. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know much about how they're getting on up there at the moment. I just know they're league champions. Mm-hmm. And um, but Danny Owens would. Um, he, would obviously, he, he's had quite a lot of success over with, the years. Yeah, with yeah. Cormac. And was involved with off the under twenty ones mm-hmm. and what have you over the years. So. Look, I don't think that, I think it'd be quite seamless the transition there. Okay. Well, looking at the group as a whole, Tommy, um, oh. what are what are our, I, I know it's not an easy one, but what are our, what are our predictions? Okay. Who do you see top in the group? I could see cameras top in the group. Okay. I could see a dog fight then between Clock Balacala and Rat Down the Air to see who finishes in second place. And Lord, as I am to say it, and I have friends up there, and I, I like them. Um, I think Castletown might struggle in that group. Yeah, I I, to be honest, I think anyone would struggle in that group. Yeah, oh, that's a tough, tough group. Yeah. That's a really tough group, mm-hmm. you know, so it is. Wouldn't fancy being drawn in that. No, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, you know. But look, that's Championship hurling. And Championship, there's more to it than just a hurling, you know. It's how well you're prepared, you know, how much you wanted. You know, are you prepared to, to die with your boots on? You know, and that's Championship hurling. And if you... if any team of those eight, if they're prepared to do that, will get results down the line. And this could turn out that someone could top a group here with three points. Yeah. It could happen so easily. I think after the first yeah. round of fixtures, we'll have... We'll have we it. haven't predicted a draw in any game. No. Which is an impossible no. thing to do in Hurling. But, like, three points could top you here. You mm-hmm. could make a giant top of a group. Well, no, nobody predicted a draw 226 to 226 in a county final. Yeah, that's... But, right. you know, like, that on that the day, yeah. anything can yeah. happen, of course. That happens. And... So it's so tight, it really is tight. There's nothing between them. There's literally nothing between them. So there's that. So Tommy, the Leash, the Leash Championship is obviously very competitive the last couple of years. Um, it's, it's great to watch. 
it has been it has been a really competitive championship since they went back to eight and eight, mm-hmm. eight senior C and then eight senior A. Um, and you go back last year's county final, the previous year's county final were absolute classic games of hurling, really brilliant games of hurling. And there's there's a massive base in Leash, massive hurling base in Leash with brilliant fans. And I would urge all those Leash supporters get out and support your own clubs, mm-hmm. get out and support hurling in general in Leash. Um, you're going to get great entertainment and these teams are providing great and have done for the last three or four years. So get out there, start next Thursday night, you know, possibly the tie that everyone was looking for to start it off, Clock Balacolla and Rat Downey. You have Camrus and Castletown Gales then after that. You know, brilliant games on over next Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday in both grades, senior and senior A. Go out and support them. Go, these guys are training hard. They work as hard as any club player in any county. And they're as honest as any club player in any county. And their desire to get to the top of the pile is as big as any player in any county. So give them your support. Go out. Go to the games. You know, and enjoy it. And hopefully we'll have a brilliant championship again this year. Well, that's the aim. I think that uh, concludes our show today. Thank you for joining us here from the Midlands Park Hotel. Stay tuned, we'll be giving you our preview of the Leash Senior Football Championship and we'll also reconvene before the Leash Shopping Centre Senior Hurling Final to give you a preview then. Thanks for joining us and goodbye.